right into the danger zone. Ah, uh, sorry guys. I've been watching a lot of Maverick clips. Pardon me. Hey, it's Wildcard Wednesday. I'm Cher, and this is Essential Oil Apothecary. So, what are we distilling this week? Well, I have a couple of farmers that I've been working with since 2014, and they have supplied me with Blue Lotus Absolute. So this is the true blue water lily that the Egyptians used. And um, we had an interruption because last year crops were bad and things are finally really good. This is a great year. I have Blue Lotus back into my shop and I said, hey, farmer friend, <laughs> do you have the dried flowers? And he said, yes. And I said, send me some kilos. So no kidding. This is what we're distilling today. And actually, we're going to do a couple of things. We are going to distill this and get some gorgeous hydrosols. And we're going to tincture some of this. And the reason why I'm going to tincture some of these blue lotus flowers is I'm going to distill it under pressure, like vacuum distill. And we're going to see if we can create an absolute on top of it. And I'm going to do all of that today while I'm drinking my frankincense water in my antique A&W mug. It's going to be a crazy one. I hope you want to watch this. Before I get started on the tincture, I'm a very bad Scottish fold mama. So the little fur ball that I was singing to in the beginning, that is Udi. And Udi is his name because when I got him as a kitten, he was the color of agarwood. And I tried to come up with different names and I just didn't really get anywhere. I just loved Udi and it stuck. And I asked some of our customers and they said, yeah, it's Udi. <laughs> so essentially uh, our customers basically named my cat. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, let's take a look. Now, I'm going to be saving some of these beautiful flowers um, for teas and stuff like that as well. Not too much, because um, I'll just get more for that. But basically what I'm doing is I'm just doing a small tincture with this. I'm using 190 proof certified organic alcohol. And um, my preference for tincturing is always... Uh, the grape, certified organic grape alcohol. However, it's out of stock. Um, the place I've been buying from for a few years, it's forever out of stock. And um, uh, so I use cane sometimes, and that's fine too. It's not perfect, but it's fine. It'll, it'll do what we're trying to do. Remember, this is wild card stuff. We're just, we're having fun. So I just have this kind of, squish down a little and we're gonna do the same with the still basically and let's see here that's probably enough and then we just basically cover it with with the uh, alcohol and let it sit for quite a while I actually have a gardenia tincture that I started working on in October so the story behind that is I got back from Egypt last fall I actually went to visit some distilleries and jasmine farms and the day after I was back I was almost like a zombie because the flights were long and I found out I can't sleep on you know 10 12 hour flights and so anyway um, I noticed here it was October here in Sacramento and there were gardenias growing everywhere. So I'd kind of forgotten that they tend to do two crops. They have one about this time of year, which I'll be out uh, harvesting pretty soon. And they also have a second rising, I call it, in October. And so I started the tincture in October and I'm gonna add to it in the next week or two. And um, we'll be experimenting with that as well. 
But anyway, so this is the Blue Lotus tincture, and that's as easy as it is for tinctures. So we'll, we'll let that sit. We'll put that in the apothecary in a cool, dark place, and where all my other tinctures uh, live, and um, we'll revisit it down the road. Okay, so that's that. And so next we're gonna fill the still with some more flowers. We're gonna add uh, fresh distilled water. I just made it, I just finished. And get some ice in the condenser and, uh, and away we go. Oh, I adore blue lotus. I adore the blue, pink and white. You know, that's why I have it in my shop. I have to, I mean, they're just, they're just beautiful. Okay, so on from our art form. I have filled the pot as far as I want to go and then I'm going to put the distilled water in there and I have filled the column and again I don't know how this is going to go but we're going to try it and see what happens. I'm curious to see if the water ends up being a little bit blue tinged in color. That would be really cool and even with all the little projects I'm doing here I still have quite a bit left, which is pretty amazing. Um, so I'll come up with more things. I mean, it might be the case that if this turns out to be wildly successful, I'll just offer Blue Lotus in our apothecary. I mean, and that'll be that. And it's something I always wanted to do anyway. I, I just love hydrosols. All right. Okay, so I'm going to get everything all set up and we'll get this running and see what we get. I just wanted to mention or remind that um, I have put a little bit of olive oil on the threads so that everything's easy to disassemble when I'm done. And uh, one of these days I will show a complete dis disassembly of the still. It's really easy, but it's kind of a fine line because when it's still hot, you really can't open it up to get the mark. It's called mark, but it's the old material, the spent material. Um, but you can't leave it to cool down completely. It's, it's just really tough to get off. But anyway, what I also was gonna point out is these flowers are super dry and I wanted to rehydrate them. And so what I did is I measured out how much water I'm actually gonna need in the still for this distillation and I held back a little bit to put on top. I've already put some in here, so. I'm obviously faking you out at this moment, but it's Blue Lotus, so I, I feel like I can be forgiven. <laughs> Okay, I'm kind of riding high here. This is my first distillation of Blue Lotus Hydrosol. Well, we're coasting along on our distillation and you're probably wondering what Blue Lotus Hydrosol smells like. Well keep in mind this is dried flour and so it's going to have some of those nuances and by that I mean it does smell a little like dried flowers but I'm also picking up a little bit of that narcotic blue lotus scent that us lotus hounds adore. I think over the next day or two, this is really going to develop into a very interesting hydrosol. We're three and a half hours into our Blue Lotus distillation and there has been nothing in the last 20, 25 minutes. So I'm gonna call this a wrap. 
All right, so that's it for our Blue Lotus distillation. Leave your comments below. I'd love to hear what you think about this. And subscribe. And check us out on our website at essentialoilapothecary.com or check us out on our Etsy shop, EO Apothecary. We'd love to see you. Oh, of course. It's just trying to make me look bad. All right, bye everybody. Thanks for watching.